2012, Fernando Alonso, when fighting for a title with Sebastian Vettel, said, I'm not really fighting Sebastian Vettel. I'm fighting Adrian Newey. Guess what happened today? Adrian Newey and Fernando Alonso finally joined forces. We're going to talk about what to expect. Let's go. Or will he? Will he actually be there to experience the fruits of what Nui can actually provide? Uh, we don't know. There's some questions there. Like, I, I guess, I guess it's, that's... It's, it's true. Fernando Alonso will be 45 years old. It's true. He may not be the same Fernando Alonso he was in 2012. Yeah. Well, I mean, we, we would love this if he was in America because the retirement age keeps increasing for people that, you know, look for what we call the social security, which is financial benefits that folks get after retiring at a certain time. I'm convinced that Fernando is not going to get them. Or he is going to get them soon enough because I'm not convinced as much as you are, Shez, that A, Fernando will be there and B, that Nui will be able to do exactly what what everyone right now in the in, in the sphere of Formula Nui thinks will happen, which is just all of a sudden magically Aston Martin is going to jump the line and, and be fighting for wins. What what uh, what makes you think he won't? Like what's what is it that's lacking at Aston Martin? <clears throat> so- so let's let's take that if, as the first uh, thing, right? Um, look, I agree. In the heat of the moment, right now, where we're all prisoners of the moment, there's no actual racing happening, and this story has been going on for for months, if not if not longer, right? And uh, and so I see I see that. Let me get ahead of this first of all. This is a great move for Aston Martin because they are nowhere. They're they're just not even relevant. I'm not even sure where they're at in the point standings. I don't even care. Like that's how that's how fifth. little I care about. Oh, they're fifth. Okay, that's that's how little I care about them because they have gone from what what appeared to be a promising last couple of years, and they showed us flashes of even race wins. And Fernando was competing. I, I think about Monaco as an example, right? That. Um, that that was there and they, they're they're nowhere like I, i'm just not even interested in that i think most of the weekends we don't even see them anymore so with that as context um, and clearly what they have right now in terms of their technical staff is not efficient that's why they went out and got enrico cardile they've gone out and got you know other people that i'm sure you'll name all of them for me um, but the reality is that they're a team that are just eh, they're just neither here nor there they don't stink but they're not good enough right like that's that's just what they are so I look at that. That's one element of it, right? The other element of it is look at Adrian Newey's demands. Like he basically wants to be the end all be all of of everything in terms of designing the car. Yet he's probably not going to be in there full time, right? And oh, he is. He is. He is. Okay, he is going to be in there full time, and and there's going to. I don't know what the the org structure will look like. I'm really interested in doing in knowing. <clears throat> In part because Enrico Cardile left Ferrari under <laughs> the idea of not having to report to Adrian here. It sounds like he's going to be doing that mm. or what you're saying or whatever. I mean, at least that, whatever the structure is, everyone's taking direction from him, right? Because if Adrian says, this is poo-poo, it's poo-poo, man. So that, that's what's happening. I don't think there's another team on the grid that could have offered him what he's getting here in terms of money because um, uh, Daddy Moneybag Stroll has, has a lot of money to offer that, which Ferrari could have offered. But in terms of the... Um, I, I think... Can I just respond to that? Because I, what I read was that Ferrari were offering a similar deal. What they didn't want to, in terms of money, exactly. what they didn't want to do was have to go higher because yeah. Stroll would have just gone higher. Well, um, yeah, but I think that that was that was it. It wasn't that they didn't want to match the 150 million pounds that he's been offered, or, or is is getting as, as part of his contract. It's just they they didn't want to enter into enter into what they called a bidding war. war. Correct, but it's also it's not it's not just the money, right, Chaz? I mean, I think I think that when when you get into a bidding war, look, let's let's get into this for Ferrari for a second here because I know you're going to tell me that that they that they made the wrong one. That's what I've seen. All kinds of Ferrari fans, come on, Tifosi, man, let's not be depressed, okay? It's going to be fine. We won before Nui, we won during Nui, and we'll win after Nui too. So let's let's not let's not get it twisted. Let's not act like, wow, gosh, no other team should show up on Sunday because guess what? Adrian New is gonna build a car. He's gonna build a very good car. They're gonna be awesome in the hands of Fernando for sure, but they also have Lance Stroll. But for Ferrari, right? To get into this bidding war and to and to give Adrian Newey what he wants would be a slap in the face in everyone in the organization, and especially in the hands of what Fred Vasseur has been trying to do, which is bring this cultural change of not having knee-jerk reactions, blame cultures, right? too much power in certain areas, being too top-heavy in certain cases, right? He's tried to 
in, in ways that are visible and invisible, establish a culture that, that models more or less what Mercedes does, right? That models more or less what Red Bull has done in, in many ways too. I'm not saying it's going to be the exact same thing, but I think it, we talk about management and organizational leadership in the modern world, right? There's an element of that that Fred brings to the team. By getting into the Adrian sweeps, uh, Adrian Newey sweepstakes the way they were at a certain point, and by giving him everything away, that basically says that, look, you're a one-man show. Ferrari would also be signaling to everyone that, oh, man, we, we are just so desperate for Newey because what we have currently stinks so bad that we just absolutely need him. We're going to get him at any price, right? So I think there was a threshold they were willing to go up to, right, which Fred said, both from a money perspective, but from <clears throat> where does the hierarchy work? Right. And I think that's just equally important. Right. The hierarchical stuff. Right. Because you're also at the same time cultivating for the future. Look, knew he's going to do this probably for another five years. Who knows? Maybe after that, he's and if you read his book, he has he's got other plans in the works, too. Right. So and he has other interests, too. So you want to kind of build that bench as well. Right. Which I think Red Bull have done. They're not proving to be effective in this moment. But I think over the long run, you'll probably see a better result from them. So for Ferrari to do that would be a little bit of soul selling, to be honest. And that's 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 something that Fred didn't do. And I kind of agree with it. Like as much as I want Newey, his combination with Leclerc and Lewis would be quite amazing. It's not a slam dunk. It's just not a slam dunk. It's just not a slam dunk by and of itself, right? I mean, saying it saying it three times doesn't make it true. No, it does make it true. Say anything three times. Try it. Try it. Try it. Whitney. Come on, let's try it. It's not a slam dunk. No. But on the flip side. For Aston Martin, there's nothing to lose. There's nothing to lose. Stroll has a lot of money. He has a son who probably needs a championship. I love that we're all focusing on Alonso. Like as if, as if Junior Stroll isn't around anywhere. And he like, I don't know, y'all are thinking that that Alonso is going to get the championship run. <laughs> I can't wait for Aston Martin's version of the papaya rules. Like that would just be amazing to see what that looks like. Oh, Fernando, we're going to let Lance through. You know, let's. You're going to need oh, yeah, a, the, the, yeah, 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 yeah. the racing green rules or yeah. something. I don't know. So I think it's a win for them. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not willing to crown them champions just yet. Uh, no, I'm, I'm sure you don't, you don't need to until they actually win a championship. But but uh, tell me about Ferrari's uh, team structure. That it's so so strong that it's going to win them a championship. Well, it's not about it's not about just being strong right now, right? It's about again. I'm not going to be able to rattle, rattle off people, but what I can see and what Fred is trying to develop is a culture, right? And it's, it's where was that quote from? Was it from Benedict Ovinia? It said he didn't want to upset the apple cart. There's an element of truth to that. So you know as far back as, as that is when these negotiations were breaking down, right? It's not about the money, right, Chess? If Ferrari, get, I mean, if they're paying what, Lewis Hamilton, what amount of money? Like that's just insane amount of money. They could pay, they're paying Leclerc a good amount of money. Mm -hmm. They could pay New if they really wanted to, right? I think that this, again, boils down to how Fred Vassar sees this happen. And you cannot have two alphas in the team. And and certainly for Nui, the, the intelligence... Who would be the other alpha? Team, well, it couldn't have Nui and, and Fred Vassar be there Why? together, right? Fred, Fred's, not, Fred's not making technical decisions. He's not making technical decisions, but evidently Adrian Nui wanted to have a lot more control than he was willing to give up. And I can't blame him for not willing to... Not, not, in, terms of, uh, not in terms of running the team day to day. Whatever it was, right? Although, although I, the that at the moment, Fred Vasseur is the technical director oh. at, so, at but, Ferrari. Whatever it is, there's enough disagreement. I still find hilarious. Not, well, and there's enough disagreement to not build that bridge. And I think there's the obvious thing about moving to Maranello, which would, which sort of is on. I know we can do a lot of work virtually these days, but I think there's an element of that. So I, I can see there's enough in there for Ferrari to not want to not want to go there. Definitely don't think it's about the money. But, but Ferrari have Parker just appointed their own brand new technical director, haven't they? Yeah. Your guy from, from Mercedes, yeah. Lo mm -hmm. right? Yeah. 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 So, so it's not like Ferrari aren't recruiting. It's just they didn't want to recruit Adrian Newey. I or, didn't, they, or they no 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 let, let me put that differently they couldn't recruit Adrian Newey oh no they wouldn't recruit him with 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 his conditions see now I I think so are we getting into like is this a I'm saying no first no I'm saying no first kind of thing like what what is it there because because it sounds like they had Newey and it sounds like Newey would have gone there too but Fred didn't want to 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 succumb to certain demands whatever yeah, I mean, have a have a little read of Newey's chapter on this in his book right when when Luca de Montezemolo offered uh him a job um in the mid tens he basically said have what you want do what you want and he said no right at that point uh, i knew he was kind of like why would i go to ferrari when i've already got 
uh, this this family feel at Red Bull. He had a reason for for staying, but now they're offering him less than what Aston Martin are offering him, less than what Ferrari themselves were offering him. Why would he go? I mean, but, what, and I, and I don't what, mean what money. Is here? I mean, is, I mean control. Oh, in terms of control. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, these, these intricacies, uh, I, I I can't set up here as. But a, that's what you've just oh. talked about, right? You you've said that Ferrari, as an organization, didn't want to give up control to Adrian Newey in terms of their technical right. department. So, so what is it about their technical department? Is it so just special? technical? Yes. Is it just technical? Yes. Are correct. we sure about that? So that's that? what he's. Yeah. So he has basically. Lawrence Stroll has said that Newey's job is to basically oversee the entire technical organization of Aston Martin. Mike Crack is still team principal. Newey will be going to the track, but ah. he's not making strategy decisions. He's not making driver decisions. Uh, he's not making... Um, so that's a better deal than Red Bull, right, too? right? Because Red Bull weren't yeah. allowing that. But Red yeah, Bull was pretty successful with him not having the keys to the whole department, right? Well, he did have the keys to the whole department, and the they won four. Cha- no, from from two thousand and six to twenty thirteen, it was all him, mm-hmm. and and he brought home the bacon for four years out of six. What about the uh, last few years? What about the last few years? The last couple of years. So he. So the, what my understanding is is that he sort of stepped back a little bit from uh, twenty fourteen onwards because the because the the Renault power unit was just awful Mm -hmm. so 2014 to 2016 he stepped back red bull were also nowhere Uh, i think they they won obviously in 2016 but it was really ferrari that were on the ascendancy in 2017 2018 you know the 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 new rule set in 2017 he was still in that sort of sabbatical off doing what he wanted in america's cup or whatever um and there was another rule change in 2017 right and the RB13 was a was was not good enough. You know, it wasn't like hanging off the back of the pack, but it also wasn't pace setting. He was then called back in again to like have a bit more involvement and settle the ship. And again, at that point, Red Bull were talking about correlation issues. They were saying that because the cars were wider, the car didn't fit within the constraints of their wind tunnel and they were getting correlation issues because of that. So they brought Adrian Newey in to sort to, to sort through that and get them back on the right track, which is what he did with that high um, high rate concept that he that he sort of pioneered for for Red Bull and what a lot of other teams on the grid took up. So that when the engine finally became you know competitive again, when they got rid of Renault and brought in Honda, 2019, 20, and eventually 2021, uh, they were back on it again. So when you don't have Adrian Newey in, at Red Bull, there's a tangible drop-off in, in performance. When you plug him back in again, suddenly things start to roll forward again. Everyone's talking this season about asymmetrical braking. I still feel that they they took him out of the game after Miami. They've dropped off. And no, I do not think that the entire reason that they've dropped off is because Adrian Newey is not there but part of the reason why they're struggling to understand why they can't what you know why well, I mean, why they're not getting back forward is because Adrian Newey Yeah of course I mean that's going to be there though I mean that's that's natural right that no one's sitting up here and I'm not sitting up here denying what Adrian Newey means to formula 1 like there's no question about his credentials right we're talking about does it work in a particular structure or not this is not a question of what skills he would bring Absolutely. If he went to Haas today, I'd imagine Haas would be qualifying in the top five every weekend too. Like I'm, I don't, I he don't might be racing for no. So that's where oh, so that's where his powers stop. Like this, that's where he did. No, but you know what I mean. I mean, this is all about degrees, Shaz. It's it's but there has about, to be a. It's yeah. not about yeah, but what Aston offers really is what he wants, and I can't I can't sit up here and say no, Adrian. You bow down to Ferrari because but, that's who we are. What, that's what he wants. Okay, but you're not looking at the flip side. The Which flip is? side being, what is what does Adrian Newey give to Aston Martin? That's what I'm trying to sell to you, not sell to you, but at least at least trying to argue that there's a that there's a higher upside to sure. having Adrian Newey and creating your technical structure or around Aston what he Martin, wants. Absolutely. 
Why yeah. is it not for Ferrari? What is it that's well, so good they, about they, Ferrari? What is it? Well, because what Ferrari... success are they having that means that Adrian Newey and building your technical team around him is this not, not... better than what they have right now? Yeah, but I think this is, I mean, you'd have to ask Fred this, right? Because he has done the I'm ma- asking you because I can't ask Well, Fred. I have no idea. I mean, I, I don't have access to as much data. And look, we're sitting on the outside making these decisions and we, we have limited access to data. We can go by what's said in the press, what's written here and there, what people say here and there. We have limited access to this, but clearly, Fred, we can all agree in Fred's leadership, right? Like, I, I also feel like Fred is the kind of guy who would have given up what he reasonably thought he could. So I have to give benefit of doubt to him. And you're right. This is a bit of being on the limb, but but we only have limited access to everything. Look, Fred's done the math to say, look, we can be at point X with Adrian Newey. We can be at maybe X minus point one without him, right? That's the math they have done. That's what they're telling you by virtue of their decision because Ferrari were in it up until they weren't in it. And and the reality is it's not about money. So why do you think that's happening? I have no idea other than to just believe in Fred and what they're saying. And you're right. Only time will tell if we're right or wrong. As in only time will tell if Lance Roll will win a championship or not. Like that's, that's just how it is. We have no access to that data right now. Uh, we don't know, by the way, if Max is following um, uh, Adrian at, at Aston, which might be one of the keys to why he agreed there. I mean, Max certainly wouldn't have been able to make it to Ferrari because they're two drivers right now. Who knows if that played into that? I can ask questions, but you're right. I have no earthly idea why they why they decided, but they did decide to not do this after having extensive negotiations with them with him, right? But, but there are certain inferences, right? Uh, one of the things that Newey said about moving to to Silverstone was that Lawrence Stroll is a, an owner that is involved in the team so Newey would be answering directly to adrian newey it was strong adrian newey would be i mean this is basically directly because he's answering to himself but yeah you're right I, I, to, uh, to 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 lawrence stroll right whereas at ferrari he'd be answering to fred for who who is answering to benedita vigna who's which answering makes sense. to uh, which makes sense okay. Jess, which makes sense because why would you want to have you wow. can't have that okay what is it can you can you pinpoint what the difference was between when Ferrari was super successful and no, when Ferrari wouldn't were not successful. Okay. Can you can you again, pinpoint the difference? Again, there? yes, we can always go back in the past and 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 look at why things were working in a certain time and age. This is a new day, a new dawn, a new age. Like okay, let's talk about right now. Just use let's, history let's, that. let's talk. Well, let's okay, talk let about, me just ask you that. Right, are Mercedes, about right, are let's Mercedes about right successful now. in this time frame or no? Yes, because they don't they have board interference. Because they don't have board interference. Okay, but that's about what they're trying to do now. That's what Fred is trying to do. No board inter- interference. Everything goes through me. At the end of the day, it's my neck on the line. If I don't do a good job, boom, I'm gone out of here. So why is Benedito Vigna getting involved in talking about why Adrian Newey shouldn't be coming to? Florida? I told you why. I told you why. Why? why because they knew they weren't going to do this. He's in the management, and that's direct interference with recruitment. So no, it why isn't. is he getting involved? No, it isn't. It's there's a difference, right? There's, so there's a difference. Look, um, I mean, we've had these examples. If if you follow LeBron James, right? When when he when he was a free agent, he got recruited by everyone. Where owners came in and did presentations. There's actually a brilliant one for those of you that are in the U.S. and or basketball fans. Look at what the New York Knicks put together in their pitch to him, right back in 2010. Owners can get involved in negotiating with superstars. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not a question of whether, okay, why did Benedetto Vigna get in, involved in the negotiation, but ultimately decided against it? He clearly aligned with it too. And by the way, his quotes tell you what, what they were thinking. It's clearly what Adrian New is asking for, they were across the board not happy with it, right? Why? They weren't agreeing with it. That's why he put those quotes out there as far back as, I don't know, like two months ago. Yeah. That already felt to me like a mistake. But let's just go back it, to my it, first it, question again, right? because it's not just about what happened in the past. When when Ferrari was successful, what was Jean Tot able to do? He was able to keep the board out. Correct. Right? What, what is what is Fred not doing by the virtue of the fact that you're hearing Benedito Vigna talking directly about why they don't want Adrian Newey? Are you are you suggesting that Fred wanted Newey but Benedetto did not? Is that what you're suggesting? Okay, well that's that that's a new direction I hadn't contemplated. I have that's not exactly what I what I've heard from Fred sounds like he he was also quite aligned with the idea of that. So okay, I, I feel I feel like I, he's I feel like he's towing oh, the party. Well, line. I mean, I, and if, I and if you want to talk about them, so. if you want to talk about right now and board interference, just look at Alpine. 
that like if you want to see what board interference looks like in a, a works team so that's what it looks like you are telling me that that fred wanted adrian newey even though he would have reported to the ceo at ferrari fred would have no problem with that but benedito winia had a problem with that that's a wild theory i did not hear one. i i've never heard fred say I, I i i wasn't happy to to give to roll out the red carpet well, why would he say that Exactly. Why would he say? But why would he say anything? This is because, my point to you. Because if he's in charge, he sh Wait, he should be the one saying. I mean, I, now you now we're talking about reading tea leaves, right? Like I'm I'm not. Again, we get these quotes, we get these mini interviews, and that's all we have to go by. Every. But I heard directly from Lawrence telling. Stroll saying, "I have recruited Adrian Newey. Adrian okay, Newey sure. has has is re is reporting directly to the okay, boss of enough. Aston Martin. Great. If he's if he's working at Ferrari, he's essentially reporting to. A middleman, as okay. as powerful as that middleman is, he's still reporting to. A I mean, middleman. okay, Ferrari is Ferrari, right? Like that's that's unlike. I mean, look again, we can we can get into and that's maybe that's maybe why Adrian Newey didn't want to come, and maybe that's why a certain sure. level of introspection needs to be taken as to why Adrian Newey didn't want to come no. to Ferrari. No. Not so at Ferrari all. are always right. Is that what you No, saying? no, they're not always right. They're, on this occasion, they're right. Like, look, between you and I, we are looking at the same thing from two different ways. So there could be multiple interpretations of this. We have no earthly idea what goes on in those negotiations. We just don't. We're told a few things. No. We're told, not told a few things. And that's it. You cannot disagree with me that the information that the public has that we have access to is limited, right? Because yep. no one is telling you exactly what those negotiations look like. And we also know we live in a day and age where contracts mean nothing. They absolutely mean nothing. Mm -hmm. So what does that tell you? Well, you have no idea what happened. We have no idea. The honest so, truth is none of us know what was talked about. Oh, yeah. But, but the point of doing this and having a conversation is to make influence. Let people know that we have no idea what we've talk, talk, they've talked about. No, okay, 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 no, <laughs> no, because otherwise, <laughs> what's the point? But, no, but, um, but one, one, look, let me take your argument in a slightly different way, right? If McLaren, who we know made overtures towards Adrian Newey, if we were talking about McLaren, I would say you have an argument. And in fact, I'm not talking about McLaren making a massive mistake in not doing everything they could to sign up Newey. They probably have the funds to do it. All of the top but, team. Yeah. But 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 they didn't. And, and I I can understand why they didn't. They now have a technical structure that that kind of mimics Adrian Newey in three people, and it allows them to do what they're doing right now. They are making strides forward, and they're doing this. The, the one thing that Red Bull are not able to do, which is get greedy with their, is not get greedy with their downforce, like. We know that the, the reason that Red Bull are having a problem right now is because they've prioritized having peak downforce over having a mechanical platform that is stable in your. So they've now stepped backwards and they've, they're playing around with different floors. They're having correlation issues, blah. On the other side, you've got McLaren, who every every upgrade they bring brings tangible performance to their car. But they, they've held back a little bit on their floor because they don't want to add so much downforce, even if they see it in simulation because they know that it will just end up in porpoising, which is exactly what Ferrari did, exactly what Mercedes have done. And the only team that weren't doing that before, the only team that were holding back, who, who I quote, said that they were prioritizing the platform over downforce was Red Bull, but only when Adrian Newey was there. So McLaren have got that. They've understood that. Whether they will understand the same thing in a new rule set, I don't know. But they seem to have a technical structure that understands what the game is. But if they can understand that, Chaz, it's reasonable but Ferrari, to Ferrari other smart teams will do. But they will sooner or later, right? This is a matter of time. Even Mercedes, as you just you said, made the mistake and they brought it back. Yeah. So you it's a matter have, of degrees, yeah, right? I mean, the structure to make that At the happen. end of the day, only one team can have Adrian Newey. The others have to figure out how to be successful. So there's not just one way to be successful, is my point. And, but, and look, but, we can say it's a mistake or not, Chaz, but only time will say if that's a mistake or not. We we cannot sit up here and say it is a mistake or not. We have no idea. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna pitch something. I'm gonna start a different point to this, okay? Because um your your focus here is just on Newey, right? Uh, and I agree Newey is a massive part of this i would i would feel confident that at some point 
Aston Martin will be competing for a championship. I don't think it's going to be with Lance Stroll. That's a that's a joke. But but with Fernando or another lead driver from 2026, it's possible that that could happen. Yes. But it's not just Newey that's there. Newey is the aero guy. Somebody in our comments said something like, oh, do you think that the, the Newey um, deals with the engine? No, he doesn't. But guess who they do have? Andy Cowell, the guy that basically, that basically spearheaded Mercedes power unit there to help integrate Honda into the into the chassis department so that they're both working in tandem as a proper works works outfit and on top of that who have they got to try and make sure all of the all of the infrastructure actually does what it's supposed to do and marshals it in the correct way Aldo not Aldo Costa Bob Bell the same guy that was at Mercedes that did the same thing you've got you've got Bob Bell you've got Andy Cowell both of whom were linchpins that made Mercedes what they are, now starting at the outset of a new project bolstered by the greatest car designer in Formula One possibly ever. If if Adrian Newey can bring all of that together, and yes, it's an if. I don't think it's a big if, but it's an if. But he's been given carte blanche to try and bring all of that together properly. If he does that, you've got magic. And, and that, that it's, that's, that's just, why it's just an if right now, right? That's just it. That's my point of contention. It's 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 a big if because you're right. Everything is lined up for him to be successful there. I can't wait to get to 2027 and then us make an excuse about oh, it was the Honda engine. So, oh, and they couldn't so, make this work. And okay. this, this, so I can't wait to hear that now. Sure. So so look, if if some if if a if a guy like Adrian Newey has what he needs to be successful, other than if he's lost it because of age, which I think is unlikely, because he was still making positive contributions at Red Bull right up until the point of which he left. Um, if he has what he needs, I know you don't believe in looking at the past because apparently that's not important. No, I said learning, I, I learning don't look at the past as just no, no. But it, it's not. It's not to say really this is, but, if if they were successful doing this in the past, that's exactly but, what they should do. But, if, but yeah. every time Adrian Yu has has been in a department, even if it's not been, even if he's not been in a in a setup that allows him to do exactly what he wants, McLaren's a good example of that. He still wins championships. Okay. So, so then, so then, when you put him in a, when you plug him into a setup that does work for him, i.e., Red Bull, he wins lots and lots of championships. Again, so if you do that, at Aston Martin, you give him absolutely what he wants, including a shareholding in the team. You know that, right? Did you know that he's got no, a shareholding? I, I mean, I'm. Hey, listen, I I want to get this kind of money. Like I, I mean, I'm like, hey, don't forget the thirty million pounds per year. Pay, pay me three million pounds per year, and I'll say whatever the hell you want. Like, but that's what I want. But no, he's I, gonna. He's but but the but the the reason for paying him that money is because he's got a track record sure. of doing the stuff that you're paying absolutely. him the money for. Absolutely, absolutely. Look, um, my only thing with not going back to history is is just to the idea of saying. This worked in the past, therefore let's copy and paste the same thing and expect that same model to work again. And I just, and I think you're right. M Ferrari did try to get Adrian Newey, so evidently they did feel the need to have him too, right? So there's there's some truth to that, but I think this is about thresholds, right? They were not willing to go beyond a certain threshold and I can't blame them. I would I have think that was a mistake. With, okay, I maybe time will tell, time will tell. We'll see, we'll see. I, I think that I, where I would have been upset <laughs> is if they just said, oh bleep, but we don't even care about Newey. Either he comes here or whatever. Like that's not what happened. We know that there was an effort made. It didn't work out. And look, Stroll, perfect situation. He has nothing to lose. He has lots of money to give and he can bring all the right people in and they can start fresh. It can work. We'll just have to wait and see. That's all I'm saying. Amart, what are the things about Ferrari not wanting to take on Adrian Yu because they didn't want to mess with their own technical structure is that it suddenly puts a huge amount of pressure on their technical structure. If that technical structure doesn't deliver, then questions are going to be asked. Why didn't you get Adrian Newey? Because that would have been the thing. Because you, Fine, you put faith in what you had. But if you get the same but, results as you're getting now, and you're not winning championships with Lewis Hamilton in the car. Yeah, but you could say the same. Questions are going to be asked about, but you don't I, have them. 
But if you do have him, and then the pressure is ratcheted up even more because now the expectation is nothing but championships. And I, 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 I agree. And, that, now, and that, that, is, that is the pressure that, that Adrian Newey faces. But we know that he's faced that time and time again and won championships. It's not Newey who faces that but, pressure. Ferrari does. But whereas at Ferrari, the technical team that they have right now is not the same technical team that won championships from 2000 to 2004. You know what I mean? So... Yeah, but so I think you can't, we... you can't rest on your laurels and say, "Oh, well, we won back then, so we'll win again now." We'll just do the know. tried and tested Ferrari way. What is the Ferrari way to continue? It's, it's Freddie's way. Mistakes on. on the track. I don't know. I but, believe but, in Fred. You can call it blind optimism, but I think he's really going but, for something. But, that, I mean, but, it... but 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 I think I think it's a high stakes gambit sure. to say I'm going to believe in my own technical staff when they haven't proven yes. themselves. But we can also, but we can also agree that bringing Adrian Newey on would have also ratchet. It's not like a guarantee. It's not a slam dunk. Like I don't understand why we do that. I, I think it's me, close to a slam dunk. Oh, but come on! Out. We're just assuming that McLaren's not going to do anything. We're just assuming that Mercedes are going to just get blown out. Like I don't, I don't. So this is where I defer, right? Like I defer with going to the extreme on this and saying yes. Once you sign Adrian Newey and Lewis Hamilton, like somehow magically. Ferrari's going to win like 20 out of 24 races in their race count. That's not what's going to happen because the competition is much more tight, in my Red, opinion. Red Bull, Red Bull did it one season ago. Yeah, but that's because the other people hadn't figured it out. Like, when next year, what do you think is going to happen? Why? Again, why six, yeah. It's just going to be a toss up. He could get it wrong, too. Uh, no? I mean, I so, can't think of a season. I can't think of a rule oh, set change in which Adrian Newey's got it wrong. Okay. That way. All right, fine. I mean, if, if you can, if you, agree if you can, this, or if anyone I, can I in the comments, please let yes, me know. please let please let us know. All I'm saying is he can get it wrong too. That's that's my position. It's a very weak one, by the way. Like I'm just saying, let's not start to crown it as if they're just going to run away with everything right out of the gate. They have a driver problem. Hello, has anyone seen Lance Stroll? Like where we're just going to sit here and like act like nothing's going to happen? Like no, Fernando, Fernando is a two-time world champion. But I agree. That, that's, but that's, that's probably that's probably besides the point. minus pros and cons. But there you have it. Wait and see. That's all I'm saying. And and oh by the way, let's if Max comes there, then I'm changing my opinion because because that's the one other thing that we kind of discount the importance of having a driver like Max, okay. like Seb, okay, we, like okay, Nika, about, right? Like all of these. Like Seb. Like, huh? Seb. Like of Seb. Course. Yeah, of course. Come on, you can't just say like it, it. I mean, you can't just say that he was just well. Mark Webber didn't win any of those championships, did he? So that, well, he on, he was he that. was on course to win the 2010 title until Red Bull made a massive strategic error. Okay, fair. all right, but what I mean, th these are championships that are won. like we can't just discount a four time champion saying, yeah, whatever. Like, that's not you can't do that. You can't just wow. do that when you just gave me all of Adrian Ewing's credentials of being successful. Seb's done that, yeah, yeah. Before, yeah Mark know. Webber was sure, in, some was luck in, in there. Was in, the RB, was in the RB5 and six. Oh, and come on, you can't do that. You you can't just use it to, to, to tear down a champion. Like, come on, like that's. There's some there's some relevance. Okay, but we can agree on Max. No, we can agree on Max. Like, if, if Max goes there, okay, I'm in. I'm in because that that is the game changer. Not not, not if Fernando's there. Uh, so my thing with Fernando is I don't quite know if he's going to stay or not. Like, I mean, there are rumors about him retiring, well, right? And maybe he's decided against it. I don't know. Um, I think again, the, the big question mark is what. So let let's just do this. We've done this with Mercedes, right? Your Lawrence Stroll. You have Fernando on one side. You have Lance Stroll on the other side. And Max says, yeah, sure, I want to join. What do you do? Yeah, you're going to kick Fernando out. But that doesn't mean that like, I don't believe in this project without... No, but I didn't say it's... Even with but this is why, But just, this is why I say a lot remains TBD because when you put in all the resources, when you put in all of this, A, you need someone, you need a glue guy to make all of this work. And now Adrian Newey might be a genius... In terms of designing car, he may not be a great motivator. He may not be a great team leader when he's given all of these things. He may not certainly be that at this stage in his career. Maybe that's not what he wants to do. I don't know. The other thing, that's one element of it, right? Everything else that happens trackside, Adrian Newey does not have a whole lot to do with. Even that element has to come together, right? And then you have drivers. That's the biggest issue. We're talking about papaya rules right now. Wait till you get Max and let's just say Alonso in there. Like, what do you think is going to happen there? We've talked about we'll it. Red it won't be Max and Alonso because Lance will always have to have a okay, seat. Okay, fine. So then <laughs> I can't wait for that. I can't wait for ne formula nepotism. That's what I'm going to call it, to, to show up in that. I can't wait to see what happens then. It's heat of the battle. Alonso, Stroll, going at it. P1, P2, like... Oh man, who's leading in the championship? Like, oh, let's let's see how that works. Oh my god, I can't wait for that. Like, I'm, I'm I'm genuinely rooting for success for them for this exact reason.
<laughs> I mean, if it works out the way it has at Red Bull, Lance Stroll will be struggling to get out of Quali One, and 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 Fernando will be winning races. We'll see. I mean, look, I think Stroll is good, decent enough to get get into Q threes. I mean, I, I'm not sure. No, that, I thought I thought Checo was as well until he started driving this car. So, well, but now evidently Max is going to be suffering from the same thing too. We'll see. Like again, so this is why the question marks, right? Whereas I think if he had gone to Ferrari, Adrian Newey would have. I mean, between Leclerc and 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 Hamilton, like we. No, nothing. I mean, I think whatever pair you put up at Aston, even if it's Max and Alonso, I would pick Leclerc and Hamilton over there. But that's not the only thing that went into the decision. Got to have a car to do it. Got to have a car to do it. And Got to have, have a technical structure Absolutely. that allows them to, to have a car to do Perfectly. it. Perfectly. And, and no evidently way. Ferrari can offer that to him. So there you go. It is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. All right. I, 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 I think... I think we've probably milked this one as far as we can. <laughs> <milk it. laughs> uh, I've, yeah. Um, so let us know what you guys think. Do, do, do you guys think that that recruiting Adrian Newey is the magic bullet uh, that's going to suddenly bring the Galacticos that is Aston Martin together uh, and make them the Avengers of Formula One? Uh, or, or have Ferrari made the right decision uh, and actually um, they, they have enough in-house uh, to battle Newey and his minions and um, let us know in the comments what you think please as always like please subscribe uh, and we will see you guys in the next one later